<sighs> okay. Welcome back to Nick Lens Comic Corner Classic Last Noon Classics. This episode number 2346 and up shot number 2240. I got two hour trades and they're both featuring characters. One who has been live action and the other one should be live action. And I've heard rumblings that apparently James Gunn didn't like this character very much. Well, we'll get to that. First that we have is the Sog Star Lord. The Saga of Peter Quill. Uh, this mostly book collects stuff for Peter Quill. That's so stuff for him published. Some of the stuff in the last 20 years. We have Guardians of the Galaxy Point Zero One, Which is basically uh, one of the... An, a retelling of Star-Lord's backstory. That was reprinted already in the first trade of Guardians of the Galaxy World by Bendis. Um, <clears throat> and then you had in here... Uh, for some reason, put this before the next mini series, but next the next set of issues from Thanos. Uh, they put Star Lord volume. They put the Star Lord uh, series in here. Well, let me explain this book. Uh, this is Star Lord, um, volume two. It surprisingly lasts only for eight issues. Thinking really eight? Yes, eight. Uh, these five issues are known as Star Lord Year One. Now, the opening issue, uh, from what I can tell, is basically Sam Humphreys just just sort of doing a sort of a slight a streamlining of the original first appearance of Peter Quill from the 70s. Like him basically stealing a ship, being a bit of a jerk, and apparently the time makes stuff with the movie itself, like when he's throwing Yondu and the Ravengers, so this Yondu... Uh, this is, and of course, here's the strange thing about the Yondu of present day. He is later available to the ancestor of Yondu from the, uh, 31st century Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. And it's like, basically, this storyline is basically a mixture of 616 Peter, uh, Peter Quill and a little bit of movie Peter Quill, uh, for the Ravager stuff they just had through the seven air. Uh, surprisingly, the Ravagers, uh, here's the strange thing about them. Uh, I don't remember them appearing out to this book. It's like they're here for this this one storyline. Yandu himself does appear again after this in a mini series, and that's it for him. Yeah, but it's it's a good storyline. It's, it's always Star Lord Year One. That's what storyline is called. Oh, I forgot to mention right to school stuff. So. Um, of course, Guardians Galaxy. I recommend this Star Lord Sam Humphreys. The Thanos book. That's on my Keith Gibbon Rob Lim. This was I've contacted this already. This was in uh. I think it was Nihilish and Prelude this, these issues were. Um, Jim Strong does the cover for issue 7, but it's new for the rest of the issues. Um, mostly put for this mini series. This series. Now, I have heard a story that Jim Strong himself basically put out there. It's like he kept pitching to do a Thanos ongoing series. But apparently, Marvel kept telling him no, but Marvel went ahead and published a series without him. It's like. The only thing published Thanos where you have Thanos as a star are the uh, the, uh, the really good Thanos one shots. And I'm like, really? Yes, I actually put this out in one of those videos I did, like top, like basically 15 things wrong in comics in whatever year it was. I remember one year, I think we have 2015, I think it was, where one of the things put on there was Jim Starr being disrespected by Marvel Comics. And yeah. I think Marvel disrespecting was basically a bad idea. And I also heard he had, in the same article he mentioned, that get this, he got paid more for KG Beast, which was barely, which is barely the character anyways, than he got paid for Drax, Gamora, and Thanos. Three characters who had many appearances in the MCU, and KG Beast paid more. Does that make any freaking sense to you? No, it doesn't. Uh, in the case of Annihilation Star Lord miniseries, this is actually done by, this is a bit of a surprise for you, uh, Keith Gifford is in the miniseries, with Timothy Green II in the artwork, uh, Rob Lewis the artwork for Thanos, uh, Star Wars Javier Guerrero, and of course Steve McNiven does the, um, Guardians. Here is 616 Yondu, and you can tell, but look at him, yeah, he is clearly based upon the one appears in the movie. Well, it's not the 30, it's not the original Guardians of the Galaxy or Drake created, it just moved to present day with more muscle. 
that's a complete separate character. They revealed in the Yondu miniseries that he's basically the ancestor of the future one we see in the... And if anyone's ever read the Jim Valentino run, or at least basic Guardians of the Galaxy from the 90s, it's the ancestor of that character. Same species, though. Isn't that quite weird? And the both him Yondu. And at the end of that Yondu miniseries, uh, that future Yondu gets killed off. Yep, do not know why, but that's what he did in that miniseries. Uh, the thing, one thing interesting about this Annihilation Star Wars miniseries is that this is basically the debut of the famous uniforms. I think, uh, as far as I can tell, I think this was the first time they actually put these uniforms on. Also shown in the, uh, in the Star Lord, uh, issues. Yeah, basically, in, like, here he is here, like, the breakout, of course, you have Rocket Raccoon. This is kind of in the way. The formation of the Guardians, where you have you have basically Peter Quill breaking people out, like bring out Rock Raccoon, uh, Groot, and then of course basically making these spiffy uniforms. And here's Star Lord in the outfit that uh, fans of the Dan Abney and the Lenny Run known for. Yeah, this uniform is uh, very popular with a lot of people. People love this uniform. And you could kind of say this miniseries is where this this particular outfit first showed up in. And it's also the same outfit. We actually have uh, Mantis, Bug, Rocket. Um, and I remember her name. <clears throat> so basically, we got to have like a precursor guns. I do appreciate it through this miniseries here. Like, you look up Rocket Raccoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, for some reason, uh, people like using the cover from using the, the image from this cover uh, for Rocket. For some reason, I do not know why, but this is just a really good cover. The mini series itself is fantastic. I personally love it because it's part of a, a really good crossover. Now the sequel, the sequel storyline. This is sequel to Annihilation. In my opinion, should not should not have overshadowed by Civil War because if you did like Civil War one. Check out Annihilation, Annihilation Conquest, which came out the following year. Uh, the books in here are really good. It's nice I got a chance to review the Star Lord book by Sam Humphrey because I have your Legend Star already. Uh, I'm gonna give this book roughly a nine out of ten. Uh, but the one thing I kind of point out, I got to point out about this: this isn't the first type of Star Lord book that Marvel did like this. They threw in some some Star Lord stuff into one trade. They did this with the... Uh, there's basically uh, a Guardians of the Galaxy side book. Uh, I actually own it. Where it collects uh, Star-Lord's appearances from the 70s. Basically from his debut in the early 70s by Steve, by Steve Beckerhart. Who created the character. Up until his last appearance in 1981. And it collected all those spotlight appearances. Which are in black and white. A lot of them are. It's just really good stuff. They, the book, book even includes the CGI Star Lord series from the 90s that was on by Timothy Zahn, which was sadly his only comic he ever worked on. Yep. Of course, I also have one that basically was for Rucker and Groot, which collected their stories they had over the years. Not all of them per se, basically all this solo stuff, including from their back of each from the uh, uh, Annihilators and, and Annihilators Earthfall miniseries. Yep. Uh, moving on to no volume two nowhere. Yes, I still have not gotten volume one for this book. This book collects Nova volume two issues eight through twelve and the annual. The writer is Daniel Andy Lanning. Artwork is done by Wilton Ives. Uh, who does issues eight through ten? Paul Pelicher does uh, eleven and twelve. The annual is done by Mohammed Asar, Kellobs, and Wilton Ives. And that's it. Uh, mostly put exactly, this is like... With these issues in particular, it's a reformation of the Nova Corps. Yep. So... Mostly put as exactly what this book is. And it's mostly just Nova just basically just doing what is doing his job. Helping people. And we see appearance by Cosmo the Space Dog. Yep. And here's a... And, the whole point of this book, why it's called Nowhere, because it's a debut of Nowhere. This head. And here it is. 
which uh, from what I've heard about Nowhere, it is the head of a dead slasher that apparently no one knows who it is. And of course, basically have no fights with zombies here. And despite dealing, of course, that's the whole thing with people being infected. Uh, the Guardians themselves are not exactly in the book. Uh, Nova gets reunited with Gamora uh, for some since Annihilation. And here's a strange fun fact about Nova and Gamora. These two had sex during Annihilation. Yes, they did. Now, for Gamora, this is, I think, one of two guys she slept with. Uh, she also had Warlock. There's also this weird thing with her eye with all the techno stuff in here. Well, that's because basically they're on they're basically on a techno war world where Richard encounters somebody who I think for some people not seen in years. He goes to so he goes he gets affected this stuff, do not know why. So this flashback when he was a kid and he goes back to space. Kind of when he kinda of got his powers a bit. Uh basically you still see the reformation of the group. We do see um uh, Quasar, which I think this part of time he was dead. Yes, I think he was dead. So, we get basically like uh, flashbacks to basically the 70s book. Now, there is a character who I, I got to point out who's in this book, which I don't think anybody, of course, uh, of course he's working with World Mind, who's basically like a sporting character book. And then we have like, oh, a virus busy. And of course, then he encounters somebody who I did not really expect to see this book. I kind of forgot he was here. And it's like, we see this weird creature. And then we see, I kid you not, from the pages of New Moons, Warlock. Yes, Warlock. Yes. And he's here with his son. Yep. Toro. Yeah, that's his son. And I love the fact that Ed Lang probably remember who this guy is. Now, here's the thing. The guy got killed back in the 90s by Rob Liefeld toward the end of the Moons. And here he is here, alive. Well, of course, the Mansion Mutants. And of course, Richard does know who Mutants are. And of course, Mansion doing perfectly fine. I love the fact that he's included in here. I really do. And I think this was a really fun set of issues. Yep. And technically, in the way, for this run in particular Nova, I have two more trades up. The first volume and third volume. And that's it. And I'll be done with Nova Volume 4. And, and basically, at that point, I'll be kind of halfway through the series. Be, well, I had some review volume six, but I, I did review the two volumes coming after this one. That yeah, I did. Uh, but this book is really good. This book roughly a let me give it a nine point five out of ten. Yep. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Particular view. Uh, I want to tell you more, but I don't have more time doing more. So I'm gonna have to call it a night here, and. I may get a chance to finish reviewing uh, some more um, One Piece. I only have four more episodes left to go, so I may get a chance to finish reviewing tomorrow. Yep. Uh, and I do have two more Comic Corners planned, but they're going to have to wait tomorrow at this point. Okay, thanks for you. Bye.